Well, here we are in our fourth session on what it means to be a United Methodist. And to remind you of what we've been dealing with, that the United Methodist Church is a global church, which first of all, it delegates authority. It's a global church. Secondly, it delegates authority. Last week we dealt with that it personalizes faith, but today we're to deal with it sends disciples of Jesus to transform the world with God's love. Now, <clears throat> this is about four or five weeks ago, we, we dealt a lot with the, the uh, uh, sense of sentness rather than being chosen. And, uh, but this is a little bit different aspect of it because really being sent is, uh, is really in our DNA. I mean, uh, and I think the best illustration of that is the appointment system in the denomination, uh, because it's an unusual uh, appointment uh, system. And we all know that uh, uh, Maddie was sent to us by the bishop and cabinet to, to serve as our pastor. <clears throat> our staff parish committee had the right to say yes or no, but if you say no, another person is going to be sent. And again, you'd have the right to say yes or no, but it's a, it's a sent system. And that is different than uh, many denominations. Most denominations have the call system. And that is that the local church, when the pastor leaves, they have a committee that uh, <clears throat> calls the pastor, which means they sort of <clears throat> recruit, they look to see who's available. Sometimes the denomination provides a pool that they can look at and they sort of vet that person and then finally decide this is, a, they have them come as a guest preacher and they finally decide which of these persons that they've looked at and they call that person and that person has the right to say yes or no to that call. And it isn't that the sent system is better than the call system, but it's radically different. And I think the, the best illustration of how it's different is uh, that I, I like to use the illustration that, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a bishop, I was elected by jurisdictional conference and had no idea where I was going to be sent within a several state area. And uh, uh, a group of uh, uh, half lay and half clergy uh, met and they had 11 bishops to send and 11 places to send them. And Dallas didn't choose me. I was sent to Dallas to serve. And I was the first person from the North to ever be sent to the deep South. That would have not happened in a call system, but it happened in the sent system. So bishops are sent to an annual conference to serve. And then pa <clears throat> pastors are sent by the bishop to local churches to serve. So Maddie's membership is in uh, the annual conference, and she is sent annually uh, to serve at, uh, at a location where the cabinet uh, deems that her gifts and graces match the needs of that congregation. So bishops are elected, sent to annual conferences. Pastors or members of annual conferences are sent to local churches. But here's the winner, and that is that the laity are sent from the local church to serve in the world. And so we're, we're, it's just in our DNA and it happens to have a, a biblical foundation because <clears throat> the, uh, the fifth book in the New Testament is the story of the, of, uh, the early church. And uh, the story of the early church, some people might think, well, it, it should be the acts of the chosen ones or the acts of the disciples. Seem logical, chosen ones from the Old Testament background, the, the disciples, uh, Jesus referred to those who followed him as his disciples. 
but it isn't the acts of the chosen one. It isn't the acts of the disciples. It's the acts of the apostles. And what does apostleship mean? It's the acts of the sent ones. Apostles are sent ones to serve. And so we believe in the United Methodist Church that we have a biblical reference point for this understanding of, of sentness. And as, as we can consider this, you look at the story of uh, <clears throat> Paul, uh, Saul, who was converted and became uh, known as Paul. And the first half of the book of the Acts of the Apostles is about Peter. Second half of it is really about Paul. And Paul went uh, throughout the Mediterranean area to serve. <clears throat> but interestingly enough, as you read the story of the early church, Paul was sent by the early church leadership to spread the gospel throughout the Mediterranean area. <clears throat> it isn't that people in Ephesus say, hey, we're dissatisfied with our uh, ethic or our religion and let's get somebody over here, you know, to, to talk about this Christian stuff. No, Paul, <clears throat> Paul was sent by the early church to serve and spread the gospel in the Mediterranean area. And so this is the sense of biblical sentness that we have uh, sort of picked up in, in our denomination. And of course, Wesley himself, a priest in the Church of England, realized because of the revolution that the Church of England could not be sustained in the United States and then the colonies, or then as it was formed as the United States, what did Wesley do? He sent people from England to the United States to give structure to the Methodist movement that became the Methodist Church founded in the United States. So sentness is a part of our DNA. The, the best illustration of sentness I always found was and early in my ministry was the model we had in the Church of the Savior. I've mentioned that before in New York City, where their understanding of membership was that any person who could get two other persons excited about a need that, uh, that could be met in the name of the church, the church would send three or more persons into the community, into the world to serve. And it wasn't a sense that an individual disciple or two or three disciples uh, went out to serve. It was that they were apostles. They had the strength of the community behind them to serve. And so Maddie has the, the, the sense of the community of the annual conference behind her as she serves grace. I had the council of bishops a sense of community behind me as I served in Dallas. And we had that strength of the community behind us because we are sent by the community to serve. And as laity, when you serve in the community in the name of Grace United Methodist Church, it's because you have the strength of the community behind you. And one of the things that, that the United Methodist Church is known for is our stick to itiveness, our persistence. And an individual, we get weary, we get tired, we need support, we need encouragement. Where does that support and encouragement come? From the community that sends us to serve. Now, four or five weeks ago, we talked about uh, 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 our experience of God's love, and I called it our, our heart, which is really uh, uh, what uh, we are as disciples. We've got the heart of, of the experience of God's love, and, and we take that into our family, into our relationships, into the political community, into the economic community, I indeed, uh, into the social fabric uh, of our culture. And it's the business of faith, you see, 
to be sent into these arenas of our life to serve in the name of love. And so there's been a lot of confusion in the United States and there's been a lot of argument about, you know, what place the church has in relationship to the state and there ought to be a separation of church and state. And so people say, well, the church can't really become involved in politics. The church can't really become involved in economic life. The church can't uh, get involved in the social structures of our, uh, we've got to be careful to get involved because of the separation of church and state. But, th but that's a ridiculous argument because it's the separation of church and state as institutional entities. It's not the separation of faith and the state, or faith and our economic order, or faith in our social order, or it isn't a separation of faith with family, or faith with relationships. So the separation of church and state can just be set aside as we understand our sense of being sent as apostles into the world to serve the world of politics, economics, social structures, relationships, and family. That's where we're sent to serve, to transform the world with God's love. Now, there's some great stories of what a difference this makes. Um, I was a pastor in Ransom for five years, Western Kansas. One of the things I understood soon after I went to Ransom was that the first African-American person who ever slept a night in Ransom, Kansas was because a student from Ransom who attended Southwestern College brought that student home for the weekend. You know, <clears throat> The first persons to ever sleep overnight in Protection, Kansas, slept in the parsonage. The first black people to ever spend a night in Protection, Kansas. Why? Because the bishop sent that pastor and his family to serve in protection. And Lyle Glenn, trustee at Southwestern, graduate of Southwestern, physician in protection, was a part of the staff parishing committee in protection who said, yes, it's time. And that barrier could not have been broken without the sense of sentness because that congregation never would have called that person. It wouldn't have been on their screen as a possibility. And then Laura and Maddie as our pastors are representatives of a movement that started my lands, our home church in Wichita, Zion, had a female pastor in the late 40s and early 50s. 70 years ago, the, the barrier was broken in terms of women in pastoral ministry. And we, as a bishop, I would have persons from other denominations call me and say, we have a wonderful woman that just can't get called in our system because congregations do not want women as pastors. Would you be willing to visit with her and see if she would be a fit in the United Methodist Church? And, and the United Methodist Church has received hundreds of strong women as, as thousands probably as pastors. Why? Because of our sense of sentness. And as laity in your family, in the social structures of community, in the economic community, in the political community, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the total fabric of community, you make those kinds of differences because you have a sense that after you leave the Fellowship of Grace United Methodist Church, you go into the world 
with the sentness of the congregation and the strength of the community behind you. So what are guidelines as we are sent? Well, we've said to transform the world with God's love. And 20 years ago, Reuben Job, one of the bishops of the church, wrote a, wrote a wonderful book. It's called Three Simple Rules. And those rules are First, do good. Secondly, do no harm. And thirdly, stay in touch with God's love. That's how we are sent into the world to serve. And so the United Methodist Church is a global church, delegates authority, personalizes faith, and sends disciples of Jesus to transform the world with God's love. The only question I would have of you as we finish these four weeks together is, what questions do you now have about the identity of the United Methodist Church that I might not have covered in this 25 word definition of what the United Methodist Church is all about. But I think your thoughts and our discussion Sunday can be uh, what questions you now have about the identity of the United Methodist Church as we go forth with this understanding. Thank you for listening.